In recent days, it has become fashionable on the left to urge the repeal of tax exemptions for churches and other religious institutions. And unfortunately, some conservative Christians have mistakenly advocated the same thing by saying, well, let's just have the church pay taxes so that the churches will be free to say whatever they want. This is a mistaken and misguided idea in that it accepts an unconstitutional and unbiblical view of the relationship between the church and government. Furthermore, those who think that more government involvement in churches via taxation will lead to more freedom have not been paying much attention to human history. If you're one of these people, please call me. I have some waterfront property out in the Everglades you might be interested in purchasing. Seriously though, the tax exemption for churches is there for very good constitutional and historical reasons. In the very early days of the US Supreme Court, Chief Justice John Marshall well noted, the power to tax involves the power to destroy. While individual Christians are obligated to pay taxes and are even instructed to do so by Jesus himself, the church as an institution does not exist under the authority of the state. The state does not have the power to tax and thus destroy the church. The church exists solely under the sovereignty of God and the founders recognized the importance of the church being free and able to speak prophetically to those in governmental authority. That's why they instituted the First Amendment, and that's why churches have always been exempt from taxation in America. In 1970, the Supreme Court ruled that tax exemption creates far less involvement between the church and the state than taxation does, and that the exemption reinforces the separation of the two entities. So it is remarkable and contradictory that those who claim to favor the so-called separation of church and state would like to see the state exert control over the church through taxation. In our day, Thomas Jefferson's memorable letter in which he spoke about a great wall of separation between church and state is almost laughable. The left maintains a stout defense of this metaphorical wall attempting to prohibit the church from speaking truth to power. Yet these same people routinely leap over the wall, seeking to exert state control over the church.